Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by LastPass. No longer will you have to remember multiple passwords. LastPass is a one single secure vault for all your passwords. Now, I know a lot of people that have the same password for everything so they don't forget their password, and that's a terrible idea. LastPass will autofill all of those passwords, again, with facial recognition, face ID, or touch ID on iOS, and it's a multi-platform solution as well. So if you're using iOS, you're using Android, PC, Mac, it doesn't matter. It works inside of applications, and it also works with in Safari and websites when you go to log in with your credentials. LastPass will always remember all your passwords for you, so no longer will you have to remember multiple passwords. So thank you to LastPass for sponsoring today's video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a few hidden new features and tricks in iOS 12 that you might not even know exist. Now, the first one I wanna talk about is within the cameras application. Now, this one's gonna be specific to iOS 12.1. When you go to take a portrait photo on the iPhone 10s and 10s Max, there's a new button up at the top right right here where you can adjust the focus of your photo before you take the picture right so right there it is I can go ahead and take a picture of the background here and you see that I can adjust the blur behind the letter there in the background before taking the picture and that's using this new button up at the top right within the camera's application to adjust the focus before taking that picture. Now for this next one, I'm gonna show you how to lock individual applications and having to enter a passcode in order to get access to that app. Now that's gonna be using screen time, which of course can be used to manage your digital health, but we have a downtime feature here that we can use to block individual applications for up to 23 hours a day. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, we wanna to go to allow apps right here, enter the passcode and in this section here, we'll decide which applications will be allowed on the downtime, right? So after we turn on downtime, all the apps, we want to go ahead and allow them, except the applications that you want to lock, right? So we're going to go ahead and tap on all these apps and allow them to run on downtime, except let's say, for example, the messages application. So if you always want the messages application to be locked on your device, once we activate downtime, all the applications will still be functional except the ones that you don't allow. So we're choosing every single app. Okay, so finally I'm done clicking on all the applications. So all my apps were allowed under downtime except messages. This means that only messages will be locked when I enable downtime. So if I tap here, enable start at 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., that's 23 hours of the day that messages will be locked individually with downtime. So when I enter the app, it's gonna ask me for the passcode in order to enable the application. So that's how you lock individual applications. And you can do this with as many apps as you want, of course, and you can lock them individually for up to 23 hours using the new screen time settings under downtime. So for this next one, I'm gonna show you how to zoom into a picture without having any limitations. So if you zoom here, you see the sunset there, you can't go any further. There's a limitation there by iOS implemented by Apple. This one's gonna be a actual glitch within the software. So you wanna click on edit and then you want to click down here on edit as well and then what you want to do is flip the photo and click done right and then you can go ahead once you flip it on the side now we can go all the way without any limitations into the photo not really cool it's the actual glitch within the software but pretty handy one for this next one I'm going to show you how to hide from the home screen certain applications that you can't remove so for example the cameras application and Safari for example so if we go to settings here and we go to screen time and then we go to content privacy and restrictions you enter the passcode if you have one you want to go to allow apps and this section here allows you to restrict or remove certain applications from the home screen. So if you tap on mail, the mail application will be hidden. Same thing with Safari, same thing with FaceTime and the camera app. So if we go back home, you'll see that I don't have mail applications no longer there, the camera's not there, Safari's not there. So you can go ahead and remove these applications from the home screen or temporarily hide them from the view with this restriction setting. This next one, a lot of people don't realize exists. Now, if you're a parent, this one's gonna be very useful for you because it's gonna allow you to set your face with Face ID as the primary unlocking source of a device, for example, a child's device, and a secondary face with your child's, right? So if we go to Face ID and passcode here, we enter the passcode, we have an alternate appearance. So this will be the secondary setup for Face ID. So if you're the parent, you set up your face as the primary unlocking source of the device device and the second alternate appearance that would be your child's face and that way you have access to the device anytime anywhere this next feature can actually help save lives in some cases and it's called fault detection and it's an ios slash 
watchOS new feature. So you need the Apple Watch Series 4 for this to be enabled and be running the latest version of watchOS on your device. So right here by default this feature is turned off. So if we go to emergency SOS we have fall detection. So this feature if you fall and you're not responsive and you're not conscious then it will actually call emergency services for you and send your location to the emergency services as you set it up. So if you're climbing a ladder and you fall and you're unconscious, this feature will help the Apple Watch detect that and contact the emergency services. So this feature can actually save lives. Now you want to read upon this because there's a few discrepancies. So be sure to read it before you enable it, but it's a really, really useful feature. This feature can also help save lives and hopefully you never have to use it, but under the emergency tabs on the number pad for the lock screen, if you don't have the passcode for that phone and someone's trying to assist you in a situation where you're unconscious, they can go into this screen here and we can add a button with specific information like blood type, maybe any allergies, any medications that you take, and also an emergency contact phone number for a person that you choose. So we're going to set that up. I'm going to show you how to do that here quickly. We want to go to settings and we want to go to emergency SOS and right here we want to set up emergency contact for health it's going to take us to the health application we're going to go ahead and start entering the information here such as name uh, you know date of birth medical conditions any medications your weight your height and an emergency contact so if you add a number to this it would add that number as well so let's say uh, just for the sake of the video this one here click done and I'll just say father and then click done. So now when I go to the lock screen, I can also share if I'm a donor or not. So it's a lot of information you can share through that specific setting. You see right there it is a medical ID. If I tap into that, it's going to show you all my personal information, the height, the age, the medical conditions, any medications, the emergency contact that I chose, and many, many more things. You can be very extensive on this particular section of the emergency screen of iOS. So it's going to be very useful in case you're in a situation where you hopefully never have to use it but if you do, it's there and uh, it can help save some lives. Now for this next one, I'm gonna show you how to create a folder with photos that you wanna keep completely private with face ID protection and lock them into one single folder. Now Apple unfortunately doesn't allow you to save these pictures inside of your camera roll on a separate secure face ID enabled folder so that only you can see them when you want to see them. You can hide them if you wish, but you can't do that. Here's a workaround. You want to go ahead and click share on the photos that you want to save. I here have two and you want to click copy to clipboard or copy right there. Now I can go to notes and paste these into notes, right? So click that and click paste. Now these two photos are pasted into the notes application. If I click up here, I can also lock this with face ID. So there it is, it's locked with face ID. And now no one can get access to these pictures unless they're using my face, right? So face ID protection. Now I can go back into the photos application and delete these pictures completely from my device, but they will still be secured and safe and locked with face ID under a folder inside of notes. That's gonna be a workaround for these uh, locked photos on your device. So you keep them completely private. And last but not least, I wanna share with you guys my favorite series shortcuts. I have control center two download and super low power mode. I'll have all those videos in the description if you wanna watch those. These are really cool series shortcuts in those videos I'll show you how to enable them and how to use them so it's going to be very useful stuff for those of you who are using iOS 12 and that about brings an end to this video I hope you guys enjoy these hidden tricks and features that you might not even know existed thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one peace